Hello and welcome to The Exchange. Australia is one of the world's most successful multicultural societies, which embraces people from all religions, cultures and backgrounds. We're a country that promotes freedom to practice any religion or belief system you wish, but it can sometimes come at a price of tension and intolerance. Australia is one of the world's most successful multicultural societies. We embrace people from all religions, cultures and backgrounds. We bridge the gap between faiths, allowing Australians to enjoy a culture made bigger, better and stronger by all. But then why do some religions clash with one another? How can people of different faiths live and work in harmony? Professor Des Carl has been a leading researcher and teacher for more than 30 years. Since September 11, Professor Des has played a major role in researching and bringing together the various faith communities in Australia and across the world. He currently chairs the Australian Chapter of Religions for Peace International. Ian Robinson is the past president of the Rationalist Society of Australia. Since studying philosophy, history and philosophy of science, Ian has been researching, debating, lecturing and writing about atheism, religion and spirituality for over 40 years. Welcome to you both. Thank you very much. Well, let's start by looking at uh, the role that religion plays in people's lives. Des, what do you think? Um, according to the psychologist, religion is about believing, behaving, bonding and bridging. And I think that's a nice way to put it. There's a belief in some world view of some description and that might include a religious or even a secular humanist world view. It's about behaving and religions have a moral code which they teach to their followers. Um, and then it's about bonding, in other words, the solidarity that's provided uh, between members of a particular religion. And lastly, it's about bridging because authentic religion is about orientating to the other and the other whether it's in the same religious group or in other religious groups and so on but it's bridging across to to others whoever they may be mm. right. what about you Ian what would you say well obviously as a as an atheist I don't think it's true but um, we're quite willing to live with and work with people who have got uh, wrong ideas. I mean, most of our lives we spend with people <laughs> who we don't agree with. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I think religion and non-religious people can get on together as long as they respect one another. Is atheism um, a type of faith in in a, in a, in a belief system? I, I don't. Possibly? I, I don't identify myself as right. having a faith yep. um, or atheism as a belief system right. because it's just I don't think there's any evidence it's of the existence of, a, of God. More of a non-belief system. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. yeah. Although, can I say, you know, on, on Des's definition that you gave there with uh, those three or four points, mm. atheism actually ticks uh, all but yeah, one of those. I, I would all prefer to put this another way. OK. Um, I would say that there are religious and secular world views, and whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, mm. no one can be absolute, have absolute certitude mm. as to whether God exists. Yes, I believe in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, but I can't be absolutely sure that there is a God. No. And I would say the atheist also can't be absolutely sure that, that there's no God. Would you agree, and would and you I think that yeah. it's important yeah. to accept that. It's, I, I think it's spot on. Yes. Um, Ian? Yeah, I think I, I think we can't be a hundred percent certain of virtually anything. I mean, this might be a whole figment of somebody's imagination that we're involved in now, uh, and and uh, so we always have to have um, what I call healthy scepticism about all beliefs. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but we can't live without trusting in some of them and trusting to a certain extent in our senses, and we can't get on with our lives without 
um, believing that some things we think are the case are actually the case. It's interesting when uh, Professor Dawkins ran the um, bus campaign in London, I think it was about two, three years ago, the big sign that says there is probably no God, therefore relax and enjoy life. Yeah. And I love the fact that they put the word probably in there because yeah. it actually reinforces what we're saying here today. Yeah. Yeah. So on the basis of that then, re really, actually, you're not an atheist, you're an agnostic. Because you, you, you say, well, I don't know that there definitely isn't a God, so that means there could be one, which means you're well, actually an agnostic, not an atheist. On that definition, so is Des. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but, I, I mean, I think, I think the, the evidence is pretty convincing. Like, like Rich, Richard Dawkins says, on a scale of 1 to 7, he'd be a 6 for yep. not believing in God, and I'd be about the same. So Whereas Des is probably a 1 or a 2 or something, or a 3. So, so just getting a little probably bit of... a 2. A two. <laughs> getting a little bit of backstory, what brought you to... I'd like to know from both of you, what brought you to your current uh, position? position yeah. uh, well, I suppose I was brought up in a particular family that had a, a Catholic background, and I got absorbed into that uh, belief system and all that's associated with that, the community life, etc., which then eventually led me into the Catholic priesthood. I was there for a while, then I resigned, got married, and the story of my life is from priest to professor, and um, <laughs> that's the way it has been. Um, but at the same time, you must go back and question with reason um, what you believe in and certainly in all religions there are negative aspects yep. yes. and I think we need to understand that and realize it and I would see myself as a person who works to get rid of uh, those negative aspects but also through my interfaith work to bring the different religion and the religious groups together, particularly obviously here in Australia and then across Asia. With an aspect and, of tolerance. Yeah, and acceptance. Yeah. Um, we don't particularly like the word tolerance, it but, to put up but, sometimes, guess, it? but sometimes it is necessary when there's a huge historical baggage being carried by, well, perhaps by both groups that have been in conflict in a particular situation. Yeah. But, I mean, religions generally are either cooperating with each other, fundamentally they're in competition with each other and unfortunately a few times they're in conflict with each other. Yes. Well, what about Ian? Yeah. What about you? What's your story? I can't think of a particular time. I think I just slowly grew out of it, particularly as I went to Melbourne Uni and started studying philosophy and started to be able to marshal the arguments and the facts and so on together. But there was no one eureka moment. Um, right. But I just slowly grew out of... I, I, I was confirmed in the Church of England. I went to an Anglican school. And, uh, but there was no particular time when I, when I uh, ceased to believe. It just sort of slowly it's happened over. The process. Yeah. Interesting. We often hear about the, um, the division between church and state. How do you feel that we're faring in Australia in that regard compared with other countries? Uh, I don't know about comparing with other countries, but I think there's still a bit of work work to do in in that regard. In there's what regard? Of, well, um, there's a lot of uh, the uh, a lot of religion uh, religious aspects that creep into secular society where I don't think they belong. For example, saying prayers at the beginning of Parliament I don't think is appropriate. I, I have a lot of doubts about faith-based schools because I think ultimately they um, indoctrinate, if that's not too strong a word, certainly encourage a particular way of thinking and I think it's much better if we uh, have a system where almost everybody goes to the same school system where they don't ignore religion, they treat religion as one of the things to be studied and discussed, but, but it's not uh, mono-religious, it's multi-religious, and, okay. and people learn to... I think that would create a much more harmonious society if we had more of that. So, Des, in that regard, would you, would, you look at, would you agree with that and would you think we should have more teaching on religion per se in schools rather than just oh, one, yeah, one faith? Absolutely. Um, I, I would agree that in all schools, whether they're religious or government, um, there should be teaching um, about religion. And if 
a particular school belongs to a religious tradition, obviously um, that's what the parents want for their child and so be it. But on the condition that they also teach about other faiths and other world views, including secular atheism. But they're not to going to teach that without bias if it is a state, if it's a, if it's a Catholic school, they're going to teach the bias of the Catholic Church or whatever. It's impossible, isn't well, it, to teach equality? Yeah, and... Bias is a loaded word. Yes, it, um, it is. Probably. But to teach it in, in a um, in a forthright, productive way mm. in, in which there isn't discouraged any questioning of that particular faith tradition because I think we should, in any faith tradition, there should be a questioning of that. I think to come back to the whole issue about um, the separation of religion and state, this is a very important issue. I don't like the word secular because I think it can be, it's understood in different ways by different people and I think that is a problem. I prefer to talk about the separation of religion and state in a civil society, civil democratic society. Do you want to unpack that for us a little bit? Yeah. Well then the question then begins, um, what is your model of the separation of religion and state? Here in Australia, one of the reasons I think we've been so successful as a multicultural interfaith society is because we have a moderate view of, um, of the, that separation. We certainly don't have the more extreme model in France where you really have the philosophy of laicite, which is a more extreme separation of religion and state, where the religion is really a secular humanism, even though, you know, uh, there have been some accommodation. Um, here in Australia, we do make accommodation for different religious traditions once it doesn't contravene basic human rights, yeah. and I think that's been important. Mm, very good, mm. uh, Ian. Couple of comments on that or you're all, you're all oh, good? I'm happy okay. with that. <laughs> okay. If you'd like to do, uh, know more about the exchange, you can head over to our website. We'll be back with Street Talk and more right after this. As a society, do you believe we're respectful and tolerant of people of different faiths and religions? I think it's individual specific. Some people are, some people are not. But I guess the majority are definitely to my experiences in here. Yes, I do. What makes you say so? My first visit to Australia and I, I see that there is quite a lot of people here in different, different communities. And uh, they are really, I mean, very calm and quiet. Of course, with the, yeah, everyone's tolerant. Everyone respectful to each other? No. no what makes no. you say so? Well, just on uh, myself, I suppose, and the people I know. A lot of people I know feel the same as I do. Yes. I think by and large we are, but uh, there are some minority groups that are not uh, very tolerant. Um, I think there's a lot of people that are, but I still think there's some people that um, don't respect others, and I think people need to come to peace that everyone's different, everyone has, you know, opinion and an option in life. A lot of the society today is not. Um, I do believe that when they do come in to our country, they should be living by our rules and our laws. Generally, we are all tolerant people. Uh, we believe in living in harmony, and that's what we have been doing all the while. I don't think particularly so, no. What makes you say so? Oh, I don't know, just general attitudes like that you pick up speaking to people reading in the paper things that are said. And how would you like to see things improve? What do you think needs to be done to improve? Well, I think a, a lot of people need to um, just accept what other people are, because no one's going to be the same. Everyone is different, and I think that's what makes the world a better place. Having the same standards for everybody, same laws, same equal rights for everybody. Well, for the media to ease up, for starters, I think the media's behind a, a terrific lot of it. Just a change in attitude, generally. If you're sort of speaking Muslim, perhaps, I think the, their leaders should come out and, and we should be seen and heard more from them to be putting their point of view across. People and politicians making, you know, 
statements that, that, that are easily misunderstood. I think it probably starts with education, including in primary school. For example, even in Australia, I came here when I was 14. And, um, and you know, at that time, uh, in school, I was just treated like a normal Aussie kid. I've never, never, nobody ever realised that I looked different. And in fact, when I, when I finished school, uh, some, of the, some of the guys felt that. And when I told them I've got to go back to my home country, they said, what are you talking about? This is your home country. It's so nice, isn't it? Welcome back. And uh, Sandra, our Street Talk reporter, some really good responses there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, by and large, I felt like people were, were saying that Australia is a very respectful country. Um, obviously, there are some people, particularly older people that I spoke to on the street, tend to think that um, we're not quite so... And I, I picked up on the word tolerant is not the word to use, but that was the word on the street. We're intolerant <laughs> of the word yeah. tolerant. <laughs> I, I, I noticed that too. And, and I, I've got a theory which I've never tested. Maybe it's a thesis for you to explore. <laughs> uh, that people of my generation, because we grew up in a fairly... Um, monolithic society, you know, and and seeing people of other races or other religions, I think in our suburb we had one Jewish person and we had a Catholic down the road and that was it. The rest of us were Protestants. And, um, we, we get that sort of attitude ingrained in us at a very early age and it's very hard. You have to consciously work on your beliefs to get over it. And I think some of those, and older people of my age and you know, round about, if they haven't done that work to make themselves more aware and so on, then they do tend to still be, you know, racist and bigoted in a sort of, not, not as aggressively so, but just in, a, in that surface. sort of way. It's there under the yeah, surface. Yeah, I totally concur with that coming from, from Ireland and the, you know, I, I just love the freedom in Australia. They don't say, you know, when you say you're Irish, they don't say you're Protestant or Catholic. <laughs> it's just you're Irish. You're yeah. just Irish. I am. That's right. <laughs> and, and the media, one, one of the people made a comment on Straight Talk about the media and she said uh, the media are to blame or they're behind a lot of it. What, what would she be referring there to, do you think, in, in intolerance? or uh, And do you think the media uh, have a, uh, a responsibility? Well, certainly the media does have a responsibility to deal with religious and interreligious issues in an, in an informed way. And I think, with due respect to the reporters here, uh, it's certainly my experience that there is a religious illiteracy among many young journalists today. And I think that, that, that may become a problem. Um, but in general, I mean, certainly my contact with the media, the media handles it, handles these issues reasonably well, but they are aware that um, they're operating in a community relations context and th they need to, to take care. So, uh, and I think in this issue, we've got to keep the history. Um, Ian might have been brought up as an Anglican, um, but I was brought up in a Catholic where the Catholic Protestant thing was certainly dying and it died particularly after, from about the late 50s, 60s you onwards. You mean the antagonism between the, an the two? Yes, right. I mean, it had been declining yep. before that, but you don't have to go back to the 19th century and it certainly was there. Yes. Whereas the students today that I teach aren't aware of that, you know, that it was still there. But, I mean, it was exacerbated during the 1950s with the Labor split. And that really lasted... The, the consequences of that lasted until really the early 80s, I think. But at the same time, you had the ecumenical movement where the churches were being brought together, together. and that did a lot, I think, to disperse that hatred. Whereas today, I think... I'd argue that the Muslims have replaced the Catholics as people who, you know, mm. uh, uh, there's a negative view towards them. I think that's partly caused by media um, and the impact of overseas events as yeah. well. It's partly caused by um, a lack of strong leadership from within the Muslim community. 
I think there's been some improvement in that, but there are still some issues there. And underlying that is the lack of an authority structure within Islam, um, which is rather in contrast to Christianity, in particular Catholicism, where you could argue you have too much authority in the yeah, bishops, sure. okay? Yeah. Um, you've got it's kind of the, the opposite issue is in the Muslim community. But, I mean, the, the, with the Muslim community, we have to support the moderates. Um, otherwise, we, we are in real strife. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and do you feel, as an atheist, is there any place in your, in your thoughts for religion in society of any description? Well, I don't believe in controlling people's beliefs. You know, but your own thoughts. Do you do you think there's like do you think you see a space for it or not? For religion. Yeah. In, of in any an, type. In an ideal society. <laughs> well, I, I I think there's always going to be a wide range of views. I, I would like to think um, that religion eventually became maybe in a minority group and and people uh, became more rational and and more open to the evidence that's around and, and started treating things in an evidence-based way. But, I mean, I don't want to go around um, <laughs> doing awful things to dares and... It's <laughs> good tonight. <laughs> we are or, a family or To religious people, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I think that's sort of naturally evolving. A atheism is, is the fastest growing, I think, group within society. It was when I was a kid, it was only about four or five percent if that uh, and now it's up to about low 20s 25 percent something like that so it is a it, if you get with the trend you know it eventually may happen <laughs> do, you have any, well, do you have any good friends who are who are religious like that you are actually good friends with um probably but i don't talk about religion right. a lot with my friends i guess paul thompson is one the uh, um uniting church minister um I, I get on really well with Paul right. and, and he, I've been to talk to his church and he's come up to talk to the Central Victorian Atheist and Free Thinkers Group, which I run in Kyneton. And, and uh, so, yeah. Fantastic. We have incredible arguments about oh, I can imagine. belief. I'd love to be a fly on the wall in some of those uh, discussions. So atheism is on the increase, which I find I hard to believe. <laughs> Tish Boom. Uh, Sandra, thank you for your time. Thank you. That's great. To see more of Sandra and Street Talk, head over to the exchange, tv.com.au. Back with more right after this. Welcome back to The Exchange. Des, uh, over the centuries, a lot of uh, war has happened as a result of religion. Um, taking, you know, uh, violence as a, as a human characteristic. Do you think if we removed all religion that we would still be violent toward one another? Absolutely, because often religion is used to mask underlying social and political and cultural factors. And it's rare that religion as such um, causes uh, conflict. It's usually because of these other factors that, that are associated with it. And because of the power of religion to mobilise people, whether for good or for bad. Uh, and so, yes, we, we would still have that. But it is true that religion is, um, uh, at the moment certainly, is being misused. Yes. Uh, and the idea is, because you can find in all religious texts something that's bad and you put it together for a narrative which is what is happening now the task is to provide an authentic counter narrative to the narrative of isis as one as one, as one the example. major example yes yeah how do you see uh people possibly being able to live together when um it, it appears that neither of the twain shall meet is there a possibility for that to happen with, infallible, with, with people who say that their text is infallible and that we must stay separate. How do, we, how do we amalgamate people and help everybody get along together? Well, I think that the texts always have to be interpreted by scholars who put them into a broader context. When if you take one particular, this text, that text, that's when you're dealing with religious literalism and that's the foundation for a lot of trouble. Mm. Ian, just out of interest, I mean, I, I'm not going to ask Des this question because obviously as a Catholic he's going to be completely biased. No, that word's loaded. <laughs> as loaded. <Yeah. laughs> I am joking, by the way. But just, you know, as an atheist, maybe as an outsider from religion, mm. looking at all the religions in the world, what would you say would be the greatest force for good? 
or, or is there a great force for good in all religions and and an antithesis to that? Well, I, I think I think some religions uh, developed and, and got to their power by being part of an imperialistic uh, exercise so that Christianity really started to grow after Constantine adopted it for the Roman Empire and then it spread rapidly all over uh, the then known world and the same with Islam you know that became the the uh, um, the creed rather the justification the moral justification for the Arabs taking over all, all their country and 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 some people believe that it it actually developed about a hundred years later after th the death of Muhammad that it wasn't something that came right at the beginning but they used Muhammad as uh, uh, a way of justifying their beliefs uh, or their conquests. Um, so I suppose, I mean, for me, one of the few religions that doesn't have that really at its heart is Buddhism, although there may have been... There's some pretty nasty Buddhists in some parts of <laughs> Myanmar at the moment and yeah. so on, you know, and, yeah. and it's Sri quite Lanka. interesting to... And Sri Lanka too, yes. Mm. Uh, and even uh, in Thailand where yeah. we have worked and, and because of karma they don't help some of the disabled children. Yeah. I find yeah. that yeah. so hard so, to reconcile. Yeah, so, so there's good and bad mm. in all. Yeah. yeah, there's good and bad in all, I think. I guess it comes back to the human heart, doesn't it? And, and the way that the human heart expresses yeah. faith in a way that loves its neighbour yeah. uh, as, it, as itself. Yeah. Uh, just, just as a way forward, the, the, the future of faith in the world, do you think it's going to be something, as uh, Ian said, that's going to decrease as atheism increases, or do you think we're going to have faith alive and well? Well, I mean, about 85 to 90% of the world's population think that religion is very important in their lives. I think that will continue, yes. There may be a growth in agnosticism and atheism, but religion is going to be with us for a long, long, long time. OK, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Don't forget, we'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. What's important to you and what topics do you think we need to address on The Exchange? Hope you can join us next time. Bye for now. See you next time. Thank you.